Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today, I'm talking about the new album from Tosca, Osam. Tosca is the Austrian down-tempo trip-hop duo of Rupert Huber and Richard Dorfmeister, uh, the latter having also been famous for being part of the duo Kruder and Dorfmeister, best known for their especially popular DJ Hicks compilation from 1996, and their remix work, although they never released any album of their own until 2020. Tosca is a much more consistently active outfit, with this latest album being their ninth to date. Clearly the primary artistic focus of both artists involved, even if technically not the most famous in uh, Dorfmeister's case. I have gotten a couple of requests to cover Tosca in any capacity over the years, and when I heard they had a new album, I was mildly interested enough to check for myself. If anyone was going to be covering them, it'd have to be me. I had no idea how consistent they were going to be. They don't seem to get brought up all that often these days, aside from on the merits of their work in the 2000s, especially their second album, Suzuki. But I figure I may as well give them a shot anyway, even if their catalog turns out to be a big mixed bag like Marconi Union. Uh, they do seem like they did be up my alley. I am at least partially known for being into lots of down-tempo outfits just like them. So I went back and listened to all their previous studio albums, and here's my thoughts on their discography so far. Starting here in the late 90s, this album, contrary to its title, contains no opera at all, aside from a couple of really brief samples. We instead get a very stripped-back mix of instrumental hip-hop beats with some dub influences here and there. Very simplistic, very chill, and not very interesting. <laughs> Gonna be honest, I, I wasn't crazy about this. I found too much of it to be too flavorless and empty for my liking, and a lot of this stuff could feel kind of fillerish. The singles are all really good, and the first and last tracks handily outclass everything else, but it feels like they didn't have any good ideas for the deep cuts and just kind of cycled through some of the same ideas done worse. Like, it, it's okay, but it, it's not caper. But this is the one that everyone always highlights as their big classic and always gets recommended to me in particular, and yeah, right away I can confirm this is a major step up from their debut. The grooves, while just as chill, feel more properly filled out, with some airier synth melodies and chords and more satisfying bass lines. The whole thing has a markedly jazzier feel to it as well. Still not sure if it reaches properly great for me. The mixes are still very simplistic and stripped back, and much of it kind of ran together and meandered on. But I did in fact think it was very solid in spite of that, and it's promising that my favorite track at this time was not a popular single, but a deep cut in the key, so yeah, very nice. And this was also quite solid. Uh, about as good as the last album, maybe. It is a double album, but uh, the two discs are very different. Uh, the first kind of sounds like Suzuki, but with more variety in the grooves and textures, with more dub influence and more present vocal features. Me and Yoko Ono's a clunker. Uh, but the second disc is a much more uh, low-key, mostly solo piano record, going more the modern classical route. These guys are still making some of the lightest and most agreeable down-tempo music I've ever heard, but they are getting more creative with their sound, pulling in more and more of my attention, so I'll give them that. This one takes the energy level up a significant bit. The vocal features are more present than ever before, the grooves are much more dance-centric, and there's even a few bubbly new disco cuts. Everyone says this album gets overshadowed by its excellent opening track, and the vocals seem to be a point of controversy among fans. And while I won't deny the opener is the best cut, I had fun with all the rest of it too and didn't find the vocals to get in the way. Even on that one, like, Thievery Corporation-ish French lounge cut or whatever. Uh, Deli 9 was better, but this was more consistent than I think it's typically given credit for. Going back to a mostly instrumental focus again, kinda like Suzuki but with less sampling and more electronic textures, I guess. And with a live version of the entire album tacked onto the studio version, which kind of strikes me as pointless, as there's barely any difference between the live and studio versions at all. <laughs> but yeah, the core album, it's, it's fine enough for what it is, but it is so unbelievably laid back and carefree that I'm not even sure how much I want to come back to it. Damn, this one's weird. A lot more experiments into vocal-driven, pop-adjacent territory that has much more of a darker edge than any of their previous albums. There's a track with Portuguese vocals, a track with a crunching rock groove and half-German, half-rapped vocals, even a bizarre Depeche Mode homage which ends in some rambling about eating apple pies. I can see why this is yet another controversial one among fans, but uh, this honestly turned out to be one of my favorites. I mean, it's no fun when a band just does the same thing over and over and doesn't push themselves, and for me this felt like a pretty big step out of their comfort zone without feeling unrecognizable as Tosca, 
or like it took away from what made the earlier stuff work. Also, personally, I tend to have a preference towards these kinds of darker minor key chord progressions over the more pleasant tones they're known for, so there's that too. Here we got another album in the vein of JAC, combining their chill out sound with disco and funk inflected grooves and including vocals on pretty much every track. Although I guess this one is a bit goofier and you're more likely to run into mild rock guitars or scatting. <laughs> they were advertising it as a further step out of their comfort zone, but it's really not that. It's not nearly as off-brand or all over the place as Odeon was. I suppose I can appreciate their continued commitment to a sound that was clearly not getting them to sell better or please their fans, but it's not their strongest material in this vein either. And here we get another Return to Their Roots, an instrumental dub killout, basically another album in the vein of No Hassle, but with more of the darker and moodier tinges they explored in their most recent work. Uh, once again, it does run together a bit too much for my liking and comes short of true greatness as a result, but specifically thanks to those moodier vibes, I actually found it to connect with me much better than a lot of their previous stuff has. I'd even go as far as to say this is also about on par with Suzuki. Which brings us to here. So yeah, Tosca are... cool. Man, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure if I can really call myself like a big super fan of these guys after having gone through their whole catalog. And maybe that may come as a surprise given I'm, I am a big fan of like dub chill out outfits like Sounds from the Ground and Magic Sound Fabric, or spacey chill disco outfits like Spirit Catcher or Phase Action. Again, this all feels like it should be right up my alley, and it's not like I think any of it is bad. I liked all of it generally, I just kind of find myself emotionally distant from their work. I only think their stuff is decent to good, but none of their work ever reaches great for me. They can be consistently relied upon to deliver solid grooves, dub, disco, or otherwise. Uh, they've made sure to never make the exact same album twice and keep pushing themselves into new territory with each album, and their catalog has its fair share of highlights. Suzuki and Deli 9 were unsurprising favorites, though Odeon and Going 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 are equally solid later period gems. And it's just that as much as I enjoyed these albums, I'm not sure if any of them like really wowed me enough where I see myself keeping them around longer term. I feel like a lot of their stuff, especially in their uh, earlier and middle period work, uh, can be a bit too smooth and self-satisfied without like as strong melodies or as striking sound design as their contemporaries to make up for it. It's all a bit too plain. And they're more consistent than an outfit like Marconi Union, but Tosca don't have an album that resonated as deeply with me as Ghost Stations. Maybe if I'd grown up with them, like I'm sure some of my viewers have, instead of having just heard all their stuff for the first time now, I'd be more enthusiastic. I feel like I'd get it if their stuff was an entry point for many people to get into this kind of chill-out music and is a big nostalgia button for them. Maybe this means I'm kind of raining on some people's adolescence, but oh well, as always, I can only speak from my own experience. But anyway, that takes us to this latest album, Osam. Apparently, uh, the title is Serbian for the number 8, and is the medieval symbol for a fresh start or a renaissance. And uh, when they'd started work on this album, they'd forgotten that this would actually be their ninth album and not their eighth. <laughs> I, I don't know why you would want to advertise the latter fact directly in the Bandcamp description, and I also have no idea why they credit themselves as being an avant-garde group in said blurb as well. That's just flat out not remotely true at all. Experimentalism has never been part of these guys' core appeal, and their weirdest albums are still really easily accessible and borderline mainstream friendly. But yeah, while I wasn't going into this with like soaring expectations, I was still mildly curious to see where this latest fresh start might lead them next. Figured it wouldn't be anything too out of the box for them, but figured it'd also still be pretty decent at the absolute worst. And after hearing it, uh, okay, while I still think the notion of Tosca being an avant-garde outfit is kind of preposterous, I suppose this latest album is technically the closest they've come to qualifying as such. Which is to say, this is the album of theirs that seems least concerned with traditional song structures, the one that most focuses on electronic textures and synths over samples or acoustic textures. It's also their most abstract and free-flowing, just letting each of their grooves meander on as long as they want with some of the most lengthy and monolithic compositions they've come up with yet. Uh, also resulting in one of the longest albums in their catalog, clocking in at 76 minutes total. Now, I'll admit that when I first heard this, I pretty much had the same reaction to it that I did to all the other Tosca albums. 
that was good. Solid chill out grooves. Probably not gonna remember it or hang on to it longer term. Also thought the length felt a little bit much. Though the more I listened to it, it did feel like it was clicking with me a bit more. Like, my mind went over and made a reflexive comparison to my favorite dub chill out outfit sounds from the ground. I remember that their albums are typically not immediate listens in themselves and always grow on me uh, the more time I spend with them. And I started to listen to this more and hear some similarities in the particular choices of synth settings and musical structures and I thought to myself, you know, honestly, maybe this could have theoretically passed as a real SFTG album. I probably wouldn't consider it one of their better ones if that was the case. I probably would have thought it was kind of off as if it was their style under someone else's direction. Uh, and I probably might have found it to be a letdown after being really excited at the prospect of an SFTG album that runs on like 15-20 minutes longer than uh, they usually do. Uh, this was not an observation that I really found to be useful when I thought about it for more than a few minutes, really. It's probably better to just take the album for what it is instead of falling into hypotheticals. But my point is that the similarity in ethos and sound design to one of my favorite bands did actually mean that I had an easier time connecting with this than I have with most of the other Tosca projects. It continues the moodier direction they'd started going in with their more recent work, but takes it into some new territory for them that perhaps, while fairly familiar to me, does hit the spot more than I might have initially given it credit for. It's a solid album. Now, I suppose the album doesn't exactly start with its strongest foot forward in the first two tracks. Nobody Cares does have some nice refreshing chord progressions and spacey synths. Certainly sets the tone for what you're getting with the album as a whole. Though there's also these kind of strangely pitched vocal samples that aren't quite as alluring as the instruments that are being placed over. Kind of makes the whole track feel a little bit more dull than it needed to. Also not crazy about Gentleman. Uh, with the, while the spoken samples on that one about the ways of a gentleman and being a fellow with a heart of gold. I guess that it's a decently memorable hook, but eh, it's, it's a tiny bit annoying. Not the kind of thing I feel like I need to seek out. Also, there's like some acoustic guitar or mandolin sounds in this instrumental that have like this musically neutral feeling to them that like weirdly remind me of stock garage band loops without sounding like any particular loop from the program I've heard in particular. And it's obviously it's not like I have anything against using loops. It's how I make my music. Though the stock loops that come with GarageBand in particular, they just have a way of making music feel inherently less special and more amateurish. And while I, I don't know for sure if uh, Tosca used those in this track, I, I kind of doubt they do. They, they just kind of carry a similar enough feeling to kind of bring the track down in my mind. The good news is that I feel like the album does markedly pick up after this point. The title track is a nice, meaty, 10-minute journey that meanders through light and mysterious spacey synth chords, deep bass lines, electric pianos and regular pianos, and some samples of what I think is a guy counting in Serbian. It has enough progression to justify that length, introducing new musical passages with some kind of nice bass plucking and not really harps or some stronger percussion, but still always remaining pretty investing and alluring. Now, I am not big on that, like, scratchy voice uh, spoken sample about talking about playing the blues. That, 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 that bit comes off like a little bit pretentious and on the nose and would have been better if it were taken out. But even with that complaint, the track is still more than engaging enough for me to mark it as a favorite. And similar feelings on that track to the following cut, Shout, Sister. Also a nice meaty nine minute cut with lots of laid back and refreshing and spacey instrumental textures that progress nicely and consistently pull me in. Perhaps being ever so slightly undercut by the voice samples yet again. The one saying the title being pitched in the same less appealing way as on the opener, and another more meandering one showing up at the end with someone talking about an unnamed great composer and the gift of music only being given to great men. Which, again, I find uh, a little pretentious and obnoxious. But again, the instrumental is strong enough for those complaints to not get in the way too much. Also, thankfully, after this point, pretty much everything else on the album is all instrumental with no more spoken vocal samples. The only other cut to feature any more spoken samples is, uh, I think, Dementamente, which has this kind of uh, tired-sounding woman saying, like, individual words in either Spanish or Italian. And the instrumental itself, while I suppose containing some cool, menacing bass, Unfortunately, isn't interesting enough to really carry the track beyond that. Honestly, kind of feel the urge to hit the skip button uh, during that one. 
but the rest of this album doesn't have anything that, like, bothers me in that way. There may be some tracks which I suppose aren't special highlights, but still have strong enough grooves and textures for me to get into anytime they do come on. Uh, see the wobbling fake funk guitars and blipping synths on Tropical, the airy and mysterious blend of bright synth pads and steel guitars on Clean Up, or the 6-8 beats and blubbering off-kilter bass lines of Truststrasse. None of which are major favorites, but all of which I think are quite solid and make me feel nice whenever they're playing. I guess Clean Up is my favorite out of those three. But pretty much all the uh, tracks after that point, aside from the above-mentioned Dementemente, are even stronger in my eyes. Entre Cote is a nice longer cut, adding up to over 8 minutes, but keeping things consistently interesting with lots of different world music textures and ethnic percussion. Given a dramatic tone by all the stormy synth bass, and it, it just keeps introducing more and more cool new textures, like vibraphones, reverb-soaked isolated horn stabs, also some pianos and flutes, some possibly Native American-inspired singing that gets pitched in the same way as the opener again, but the effect actually kind of sounds cool this time. Definitely one of the coolest sounding cuts in the bunch. Early Bird has all these really chilling and icy synth pads going up next to its rounded synth bass lines that have a bit of a micro house or minimal techno influence feels like one of the more emotionally involved moments in the bunch, and features some more pitched ethnic singing that uh, fits better in the mix than most of the vocals throughout the album, and are subtle enough where I kind of even forget they're there sometimes. And then the final two cuts, Makeup and ECM2, uh, do finish on a suitably emotional note as well, and even feel directly connected in their uses of minimalistic piano compositions, not unlike those they explored on their Deli 9 album years ago. Makeup has more of a memorable tune, if fairly fluttery and abstract, and uh, ECM2 is much more meandering and freeform, but both carry a nice sense of melancholy that I think is quite well enveloping, and Again, of uh, closes the album out on a strong note. And that's everything on Osam. It's pretty solid. Definitely not bulletproof, and I'm not sure how frequently I'm gonna come back to it, but for what it is, it's a solid enough collection of down tempo. I enjoyed it. I would get it if you heard this and thought that it was really boring. I'm honestly, I myself wasn't as enthralled by like Tosca's greater back catalog as I hoped I would be. Though I would also get it if this resonated even more strongly for you than it did for me. I think it's nice that even this many years in the game, Tosca are still pushing themselves and aren't content with making the same album over and over. And I think they're still delivering quality material that I enjoyed on par with the material that is widely considered to be their big hyped up classics. It's probably not going to be for everyone, but it's certain to please their core fan base, and I personally enjoyed it enough to get, let it get away with a 7.5 out of 10. It's good. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters. There are some people. You want to add yourself to that list, link to my Patreons in the description. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.